Hello fam, Ken Mills here once again, the world of comedy vibe entertainment. To give you the idea of what unbiased is, we always see things on social media and also in the world where we wonder what is the thought process behind these idiotic things that people do. We're going to give an honest unbiased opinion. So with that being said, we're going to cover several different topics. We're going to be truly unbiased this season. Good evening, family. Ken Mills here with Unbiased. Now, tonight is a special night. I always say that. But it's Thanksgiving. So, I mean, we got a lot to be thankful for. When you look back over the entire year, we've been through all different types of struggles. Here, we had the winter storm that shut us down. We were fighting the pandemic. There's a bunch of violence on the streets. People not making money like they used to, but we still got hope. We still got something to be thankful for. Now, Tonight's going to be extra special because I got somebody with me from my immediate family. Somebody that you may know. And if you don't know him, you're going to learn to love him and know him as well. So tonight is Thanksgiving. It's all about family. So what that means is family can be your kindred through blood and also can be your kindred through connection. Now, you can't look down on either one. I got blood family sometimes I won't rain their neck. I got connected family that sometimes won't rain their neck too. But at the end of the day, them the people that got your best interests at heart. So you're going to need a strong team as we move forward because that's where success come in. Now tonight, we only got one illustrious guest. And when this guest comes on, we're going to bring the pain. Now, to stay tuned here. Go ahead and heat up that dressing. Go on, get your pie, get everything together, because when we come back from this quick commercial break, it's on. Like I said before, you're now here with us on Unbiased, on Boss Up Houston Network. Stay tuned. Maybe you're divorced or new in town. It's time to meet your match with Events and Adventures. Whether you're low-key or adventurous, come hang out with tons of like-minded people at exciting group activities. The best part? Everyone is single. From happy hours and trivia nights to outdoor adventures and weekend getaways, Events and Adventures has something for everyone. We're all here for the same reason. So come be part of a community made for singles. Your match is waiting for you to make your move. Visit eventsandadventures.com to get started. That's eventsandadventures.com. Wanna be a ball? You're watching Boss Up Houston Network. It's Boss Up Houston, where we look up, stay up, and boss up. This is T. Foxy Wyckoff, and this is Let's Talk Business and Real Estate, where faith, hope, and determination comes alive. You can't talk business without talking real estate. Oh. Come follow me. The Lord will bless. 
your barn, and you will bless your hands and everything you put them to do. The Lord will bless the property in which he's given you. Tune in to Let's Talk Business and Real Estate on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. on the Boss Up Houston Network. And we're back. So the gentleman to my left, I've known for all my life. This man here done had a heck of a journey. I'm talking about it. he done been through everything. He done went through college, NFL. He's a, a masterful businessman. And he's also one of my esteemed cousins. Yeah, man. So bring it to y'all now, Lawrence Vickers. Appreciate you, cousin, for having me, man. Already, yeah. already. I yes, see you ruffle all down too, man. Much respect. I like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like that Colorado vibes, baby. Yes, sir. Buffs all day. I love it. And we going to get to it. Yeah, man. Yeah, we going to get to it because, I, like I say, it's a privilege and an honor to have you here, especially on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Because the main, the main thesis of this entire show is being thankful. And going back to where we grew up at, we grew up on north side in Houston, Fifth Ward area. Fifth Ward, Texas. Yeah. It's, Ties. Yes, sir. Ties. It's something that was instilled in us, the principles and the things that we grew up on that built us and made us into the men that we are today. So I want to start with you to kind of talk about the beginning of your journey. Okay. So I understand that, you know, Straight from E.O. Smith, you started to get an affinity for football, right? Man, not even that, man. I moved from Louisiana to Beaumont. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, you from Beaumont. No, I moved from Louisiana to Beaumont. Mm -hmm. From Beaumont to here. So I had a hard time with my mama. I was giving my mama hell. So she shipped me off to my daddy when my daddy was here in Houston when he just he had just got out of the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. So that was love for me. Soon as he got out, I'm talking about all I know is I Woke up, we was in the car, I woke up, we was in the H. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that was that was probably one of the best decisions my mom made. I know it was probably hard for her, but that was the best decision for us at that time. And and look where it got us, bro. Yeah, because if I remember correctly, that was the Kona Schwagkart Coke. Yes, sir. Schwagkart and Coke, man. Yes, sir. Fit 300, man. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Coke boys. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because, see, back in them days... The rice meal was right here. Yeah, man. Rice meal right here in the back of me. Yeah. Swicor right here. Corner store right here. Coke right here. You know what I'm talking about? Gunner right here. Yeah. Nat Q right here. Mm -hmm. Yo. Baby D. Everybody on Yeah, there. man. That's the block, <laughs> man. What you know about the Kona highs, man? Yeah, mama on the other side. Mama on the other side. Shit. Yeah. Green Oaks, man. Come yes, on, man. Sir. PNC, man. Yes, Come sir. on, man. Miss Stella. Yes. You got to know these people, man. Mary Bess on the back block. Yeah, Mary Bess on Buck Town right behind us. You hear yes, me? Sir. Yeah, get in there. Because, yeah. look, you brought up Nat Q. Henderson. I know yeah. you went to Nat Q. Henderson like everybody in the neighborhood yes, sir. went there. That's my school. So what what kind of made you want to pick up the football? What made you want to go be that way? My first sport, bro, was baseball. Hmm. We had it in a park, like, you know what I'm saying? But just not even that. My dad like had me and everything. I was in Boy Scout. I was in uh I did praise dancing, bro. I even did ballet, I did karate, but my daddy had me doing everything. You know what I'm saying? So praise to my daddy to senior, you know what I'm saying? He had me doing everything. So it just kind of kept me cultured, but at the same time, I was bad. So I knew why he was doing it, because he didn't want me to be outside thugging, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But it gave it, it kind of made me well rounded. And it made me see things different than other people. And it made me want more, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It kind of expanded my horizon. So, I would say just that from that cue, man. Then, in that cue, no sports. One day, I was in the fourth grade. I was being too rough on the baseball. They used to call me Ultimate Warrior <laughs> while we was playing baseball. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Ultimate Warrior while we were playing baseball. That's how I was on the baseball field. But... Mm -hmm. My daddy took me to this place called Junior C. Hill's house. My auntie worked over there, man. Rest in peace to my auntie. Um, took me to the Hill's house, man. And back then, you had to play with the people who who you weighed with. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I was in the fourth grade, 
but I had to play with the seven, eight graders because of how big I was, you know what I'm saying? So right off the muscle, I was young, but it made me mature. Because it's physical, it's different from a fourth grader to a seven, eight grader. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? But for me, it was nothing because I was already, already, I'm a bull, I'm a Taurus. You know what I'm saying? I'm five all day, you know, RIP the pimp. Hmm. So I'm already on go, you know what I'm saying? Right. Red mean go to me, you feel me? Right. Yeah, man. Right. Yeah, green mean slow down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't let that go over your head. Yes, sir. Don't let that go over your head. Yes, sir. But, um, yeah, man, from that kid, man, that fourth grade, took me to the Hester Highs. I got to playing with my older cousins and some, man, my best friend to this day. He was a quarterback, a uh, dude named Marshall Lyons. Mm -hmm. uh, real good brother, man. When I say real good brother, he was one of the dudes I modeled myself after. He was, all my partners was older. Like, I was in the fourth grade, all my partners was in ninth grade, 10th grade, or grown. Like, I was that, I was that young, looking old boy, but with all the older dudes, you know what I'm saying? Because I was big, so I ain't hang around people my age because it looked that funny, you know what I'm saying? So. I always hung around the other older kids, but that made me more mature and it made me understand and grow up a little faster than everybody else too. Right, right. Cause shout out to Marshall, Bruce, and Rock. Yes, sir. Them steel boys. Yeah, man. Lion Street, man. Sumter mm -hmm. boys, man. Mm -hmm. Sumter. Yes, sir. But I, but I'm calling out the grandma. Yeah. I'm taking it back to yeah, that. Yeah, man. That's mom, <laughs> man. Yeah, man. But already right, shout out Miss Bridget. Love you, mama. Yeah, cause uh, I mean, from that point on. As you started to grow within it, like I'm a little bit older. You was there though, cause yeah. just from all the holidays and everything you seen, you know yeah. the main thing we get around each other, holidays. Yeah. Everybody talking about football time. It was always you know yeah. burning turkey. Yeah. So I'm always going to go do something crazy. You right. know what I'm saying? I'm always playing. I'm with the. Think about it, bro. Okay, so for instance, when I was in the eighth grade, when I was at E.L. Smith, mm -hmm. I went to E.L. Smith. Man, we went, uh, what, I think it was 11 and 1. We lost our last game. But that whole season when I was at Smith, like, they came and watched every game. Like, the school district, the board, everything. Because everybody was saying, I was grown, I was grown, I was grown, I was grown. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like, and I'm in the eighth grade. But I've been getting this my whole life. But this time it was kind of like, it, it made me feel a little different. It made me feel like, you might be on or something, you know what I'm saying? Because they pressing you so like this, you got to be, you got to be pressured. Hmm. But I'm gonna tell you why, we ended up playing Keith our first game at Smith, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And Keith was known for having like, all the biggest dudes. They all went to Cashman, all the biggest dudes. Now mind you, they whole team huger than ours. Hmm. We had a couple dudes that was big, but just me in particular. And this is my first time going to Smith because I went to Mac Reynolds for seventh grade. Right. Make sense? Right. So, man, I'm over here, man. We're getting ready to play key for the first time. I go, don't. We beat them 35-0. Ain't nobody do that at Smith since probably Dalton. My, my partner, Dalton, was the coldest running back at Smith before me. Hmm. Dude named Dalton Hughes. Man, that's my big dog. You know what I'm saying? All them was, like I said, they all older than me, but he was a dude at Smith known to terrorize everybody. Hmm. Look him up, dude named Don Hughes. He even went stupid moves at Wheeler. He was my tailback. I was fullback. You know what I'm saying? I remember hearing the name. Yeah, Don Hughes, yeah. man. He ran for 2400 in high school at Wheeler, man. And ain't nothing happened. He went to TSU. That's what made me leave Wheeler. Nobody ever knew. Nobody ever knew why. This man ran for 20 something hundred yards, bro, and like 26 touchdowns. We went, we only lost one game that year, and this man went to TSU. Wow. So that led you to go to the brook. That's why. Nobody ever knew. That's why. Wow. Because I always wonder, because I was like. But we left basketball school. Yeah. But at the same time, I knew I could probably change the culture. I knew I could. Just like I knew. I went over to the brook and changed the culture. Even with all the great players they had before me. That ain't taking nothing away from them. Right. I just came different. Because I ain't from over there. I act different. I'm going to stand on it. And I'm rocking how I'm rocking. And it's a hundred and fifty thousand more coming with me. You feel me? Like, yeah. it was a change for them over there. Yeah, it was a change, bro. Yeah, because I mean, if if you look at it, our neighborhood got a close association to the stead because yeah. that's like the feeder for when people get a little bit of money, they go that way. But I've never let me tell you this before. Yeah. When we was in the war, bro, yeah. you didn't have to come out the war for nothing. Mm -hmm. Like I, when I was younger, and this is what I say, which make it bad. 
I know people never come out of Fifth Ward. You don't have to because you can get everything. Clothes, you can get a new car. You, whatever you need, you can get it in the ward. So we never have to leave. I know people never even had a license until they 30 some years old. I didn't get a license until I was 20, 22, 23, and I've had cars way before then. Hmm. I had cars way before I had a license. Hmm. You feel me? Yeah. But just that mindset, that's what Colorado did for me. It changed my mindset. It made me, it gave me one extreme and then I got another extreme. And therefore, I was able to cycle between the two and see what was right for myself. Because, see, look. All right, so when you went to Forest Brook, I remember back then because you was wreaking havoc. Yeah. Um, I, I remember. I would hear about it. Man, we went over there and I beat Texas City my first yeah. year over there. You know what I'm talking about? Texas City, just one state. You know how they was. Yeah. Texas City was killing people back then, bro. Yeah. Killing. Yeah. Went over there and banged them 21-0. Gave them people 236 yards on 19 carries in the rain. You hear me? <clears throat> they was crazy after that. Everybody in the wall was mad. Wheeler was mad. <laughs> Why he leave? Every week, bro. You know, they harass me every week. Send police to my house to check my house and do it. I'm like, my own hood did this to me, bro. They tried to ban me because I wanted something better for myself. But that's when I knew I was on to something. When I'm making moves like this at a young age, you feel me? Right. Not even between that. The fact that between me hustling mm -hmm. and going straight, I'm going to be all the way G with you. I can come say on, it now because it's over with yeah, I can be yeah. all the way G with you. Feel free. Um... Back then, in high school, like, you know, if you was that dude, you was that dude. Right. Like, special privileges came with that. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be like, me and my daddy was in a situation. Like, if anybody know, my daddy was standing right behind church at the time. Anybody know what lines and church said, you know what's right there. Mm -hmm. You know what's right behind it. New Orleans Street, all that there, back there, back street here. This is what my daddy's standing at. Mm -hmm. And I'm hustling. I'm at BJ at this time. Mm -hmm. I'm at Wheeler. I'm playing at Wheeler, but I'm hustling. We down bad right now. Things going on, you know, grown shit going on. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying we down bad because my daddy always made, but it was ugly at that time. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. I made a grown man decision. I could go over here and it benefited everybody or stay over here. Just know when I went to Forest Brook, we had a we end up having an apartment. We end up, my daddy ended up getting a job. Just my daddy got his first job ever at forty something years old. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Life changed. We lived rent free for a whole year. Like these people came together as as a community, and people don't know why I mess with North Forest because they came like my mother. I even got an adopted mother with a woman named Brenda Johnson. Anybody go to Forest Brook? Ever went to Forest Brook? Y'all know. Her. Brenda Johnson, she had one son. I was the other son. Hmm. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Like, keys to a house, sent me to college, everything. Made sure I got to college, like, my mama at school, made sure I took my SATs. I ain't never had to worry about nothing. I got my own mama. This woman, like, these people love me, bro. They came together as a community for me. So when I see stuff going on, I be like, sometimes it be the people, ain't necessarily the person, you know what I'm saying? Because if that right person come through there, them people gonna come out and do what they got to do. And when I say everybody over there in North Forest, everybody in North Forest came together for me, bro. Yeah. How I'ma turn that down, bro? You can't, cause look. How I'ma turn that down, bro? Cause see, most people- We in a whole hotel, excuse my yeah, French. Yeah, go ahead. We in a whole hotel, bro, me and my daddy, bro. My mama got a house and everything, but I'm thugging with my daddy. Mm -hmm. I thug with my daddy through some dark days, bro. I'm talking about anybody know Mary Beth's PNC? Yeah. Lived in there two years. Lived across the street from PNC two years. It ain't nothing but three channels. And all three channels got porno on them. I ain't know nothing else but porno. The first, like, my first three years in the H. All I saw was porn on TV, no cartoons, no nothing, because that was, that was the only thing, and I'm in the halfway house. Hmm. You hear me? Dugging with my daddy, because I want to be with him. Hmm. Like, think about the pressure it put on my mama to even drop me out. You know my mama. Yeah. I'm Good. talking about working woman, 18 hours a day her whole life. That's why she retired now and can be as crazy as she want to be. I made sure. You hear me? Shout out to A-Pig. Because, see, this the thing, and... and to give y'all a little bit of clarity, a little bit of preface, ain't Peggy 
love all her children equally and individually. If anything go on, ain't Peggy going to jump out the window for either one of them. It yeah, don't matter. matter. If you if she rock them, that, man, that's that Louisiana, bro. That's why yeah. we rock. Like, a lot of people don't understand my demeanor. Or they be like, man, you own something. Man, I'm like this naturally, bro. Like, I'm turned. I'm turned. That's why you know there's something wrong with me. You know, like, you know there's something wrong with me. Hmm. You hear me? Because hmm. I'm naturally turned and I'm nice. I'm giving you the nice so you don't get the ugly. Right. I put my best foot forward. But they get taken advantage of, so I just learn to just, you know what I'm saying? I don't stop doing it, you know, because a lot of times people actions will make you change. You know what I'm saying? So I don't stop doing that. I just stop doing it for them. Mm -hmm. And I love them from afar. You. Yeah. Because I got to keep my peace, and that's priceless. Exactly. I did too much. But I'm built different anyway. The reason I say that is because I'm probably the only person in the world trying to live the whole 24 hours. People don't think about it. They want to rest something. I'm trying to live the whole 24 hours. I know a couple of people out there that move like that. I'm trying to live the whole 24 hours hmm. in the moment. I'm an in the moment person. I got to be in it. I close the casket on my daddy. I understand that. Hmm. I, I, I got a full vision of life when I close the casket on my daddy. I grew up. I was a kid all the way up until he passed. And I can, I can literally say that now. I was a kid. Cause if anything went wrong, I could just ask him and he gonna guide me or he gonna make sure. And definitely I ain't have to get my hands dirty. Hmm. Daddy. I'm talking about to the day I closed the casket, he was gonna step on something. But that's where we come from, bro. So I'ma die just like that, bro. I know my hero. Man, I'ma tell you a story. Come on. And I'ma see if you remember. It probably was probably about 12, 13 years ago, we all was at Mr. A's on hood night. Yeah. And your daddy came in and he had yeah. the cornrows. I think you yeah. were still in the lead. Why you think I got this now? Yeah. I never had this in my life, bro, until my daddy passed. And the whole family was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we That's the night I bought drinks for everybody. Yeah. I know I meant everybody, let's go. So we was in the front. We was at the front bar. Yeah. And, and your daddy put me to the side. He's, he asked me to look out for his children. And I didn't mm -hmm. understand what he was talking about. I'm mm -hmm. like, why would you say that to me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I normally be in the lurch. I normally never don't be at. Um, and then I just thought about it. I was like, he knew. He knew, where he, he knew where he was going. And mm -hmm. then my daddy kind of. went through the same road, yeah. bro. Like, we went through the. Yeah. I remember, remember I hit y'all like, hey, man, because I've been there. I know what that's like. Because it's like this. Like. I just got out of the depression that I was in because... It took you a long time to yeah. even get them, though. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. That's why. Like, you fought so long to get them, and then as soon as you got them... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it was a lot of opposition. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The opposition, it came from the inside. There. You feel me? It I, came from the inside. and everybody. Out to your mama. Yeah. yeah. She, she ain't down by hey, now. Ain't better. I love you, baby. I love you. I had to do that. Yeah. Okay. I know she probably would have. Hey, he ain't say nothing about me. I love you. No, nah, but for real though, you know, because my mom and daddy was you, and that's why I always tell the youngsters, like, when grown people had a relationships or whatever, yeah. don't pick no side. Can't, bro. Stay in your lane because as yeah. you grow up and you grow older, you understand why people make decisions because yes. you in their shoes. You see what they doing. You see what happened. And then sometimes you end up making the same decision that they would have made. Man, I did that with my daddy so many times, bro. It was some decisions and some yeah. things I didn't understand why the way he was. And he had demons that he had to fight. You know right. what I'm saying? This is real time. Man, anybody know me, I keep it honey. I yeah. don't care how I feel. My daddy, my hero. There ain't nothing you can tell me. Right. But uh, he, was, he had some demons he fought. And when I got older, I had to fight the same demons. And it was hard. But then I understood him. Until I got grown, so it made me be like, you know what? That's why I'm glad I never held no grudge. I don't hold grudges with nobody. Like, it's hard for me to, man, I can't hate nobody. I got too much love in my heart to hate. That man, It hurt me to hate somebody or dislike somebody. It's, it hurt. Yeah. It hurt. Like, I ain't got, man, I'm too peaceful for that, bro. And and that's extra rent. You giving them. Too much luggage, yeah, man. You, you, you giving them the opportunity to, to control. I don't you. even, I don't, I don't even, don't even get behind me, man. Yeah. I don't even play like that. You know what I'm talking about? I don't need no fear in my back. You hear me? Because I'm going to tell you, the same struggles my daddy had, mm -hmm. I had for yeah. a little while. 
And what kind of woke me up out of it, I remember you came through one day. Yeah. And I think you was talking to Ain't Picking. You asked Ain't Picking. You say, what's up with Kenny? You know, what? Yeah. he wild. And you know, yeah. this, that, and the other. And, uh, I said you were thugging. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. And uh, I kind of was like, you know what? You was out your character for a little while. If, 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 he, if he see that, well, then I need to relax. I went through with my daddy. When my daddy got ready to pass, bro, mm -hmm. I was out my character. I was somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I would say the process of me knowing, that five-day countdown kind of started for me. When five days, when I say, hey, man, your daddy got five days to live, and he really did die in five days. May 4th, 1145, I'll never forget this full moon. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget this. I would never forget this. 11.45 May 4th, four days before my birthday. And you know, May 5th is always Mayweather, so we do a fight at my house. Mm -hmm. Mayweather had a fight the next day. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. So, like, say, man, when that casket closed, G, it's over. It's over. Cause see, I tell you this. I ain't never told nobody this story. So when I was growing up, let me see, I graduated high school and everything. I was uh, about to I was about to go to college. Yeah. And my daddy feel Leo, my dad was about to die. So I made a I made a game time decision. I said I wasn't gonna take a scholarship. I had a scholarship and this some wild stuff. I was supposed to be uh going for nursing in San Antonio at Lady of the Lake or something. Yeah. And I said, you know what, I ain't going to do that. I said, you know what, I'm just going to thug it out. I'm going to work here, this, that, and other, and I'm going to stick around. He beat his heart issue, and he lived for yeah. another 14 years. Throughout yeah. them 14 years, I was doing a myriad of things that I would never talk about, but it was it was out there, and if y'all know me, y'all yeah. know what it is. He was living, bro. Everybody lived. And he, and he would tell me, and he would tell me the most sage advice. Now, when he got on his deathbed, Cause we knew probably about three months and I was fighting. I was like, look, I was asking the people, I say, hey, can I, uh, what do you need for a heart transplant? How much money? This, that, and other. Me and my sister's trying to get together to try to get it. You know what I'm saying? To try to get it. His sister said, no. And, and persuaded him to say, let him go on and make it. Huh? Yeah, I got you. But uh, yeah, but 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 see, but see, when I was at that point, mm -hmm. that kind of took me to a certain thing where, you know, when you look at Adam and Eve, yeah, when they was naked, yeah, they didn't know they was naked, mm -hmm. but then when they got that knowledge, they saw that they was naked and they were shamed. Yeah. That was my that was my thought process at that time because mm -hmm. it woke me up and I saw. Yeah. Everything for what it was. I saw who the snake. I saw who was messed up in life. This, that, and other. And that but kind you of could baby. Be you me back. you yeah. could be doing the same thing somebody else was doing and be like, Yeah. Dang it. I see it now. Like, let me tell you why I don't judge people. Yeah. And why I could deal with any type of person. Yeah. I could deal with you as long as you let me know who you is. Yeah. I could deal with a foul person. I could deal with a sneaky person. I could deal with mm -hmm. a lion. I could deal with any type of person because I don't care about that. Right. All I want to know is who you are. That's it. And when I know who you are, I can love you. I just want to know where I need to put the boundaries at as far as letting you get to a place to where I dislike you when I know you. See, you can't dislike somebody you know. Right. You feel me? Like, right. I know them. How, I'm dis I'm how? How? Like, I got my own problems. How can I dislike you? You know what I'm saying? But some things I don't rock with. Right. So, Those are two different things now, cuz. Boundaries. You yeah. put boundaries up. Cause yeah. see, okay. No, 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 no. I don't. It's not boundaries because I don't like that word. I don't okay. like the word boundaries. This is what I'm literally telling you because if you got my love, you got my love. And it ain't like, okay, I love you. We we feel like I don't love mm -hmm. you no more. Like, no, it could be 20 years. I still love you. Hmm. I'm going to still act the same way with love because love is an action. You dig what I'm saying? Right. So that's why I'm saying boundaries. When you put boundaries, there's some actions you don't show. No. I'm gonna still give you all those same actions, all those same emotions. I'm gonna get them. I just want to know who I'm dealing with, so mm -hmm. that way it don't hurt me in a way when I know it ain't supposed to because I know. I got. You. Makes sense. I got you. I got. I, you. I can't get hurt with somebody I know because I did that. Right. I take full responsibility. You feel me? It ain't them. It's me. Right. 
It's when you trick me and make me think something else. That's what I don't. You feel me? Just mm-hmm. if you're going to be ugly, be ugly still. That don't mean I ain't going to do for you. I still fuck with you. Right. Excuse my French. I still, you know. No, nah, you good. But you just, good. you know, be you, bro. So, man, I want to go back to Forest, bro. Cause Come on, man. Because, look, what I remember. I love know. them people, man. I keep telling you, I love them. Shout out to the Brook, man. So, Y'all changed me, man. Y'all made it happen. What I remember, you and Johnny Jolly was like this. Yeah. Running through there. Yeah. And y'all hit Division One right after that. And still ran and played against it. He went to AM. Mm-hmm. I went to Colorado. We played against each other for four years. Mm-hmm. I got drafted. Then he got drafted right after. He went to Green Bay with the Cleveland. We played against each other in the league. Like, we fought each other days. Like, you got to realize, like, back then with friends, man, like, all my partners will tell you. Even my brother right now, like, I squad with all my partners. And it was cool. Like, we gonna do, man. We got a disagreement with, man. We gonna squat it out, shake hands, and let's move forward. But guess what? I did know. I know that if anything ever happened, I ain't had to worry about them. Hmm. It's like that mutual respect made us understand each other. And this is why I say this: you'll never see two gangsters have a problem with each other. Never. It's impossible. It is impossible. And people are like, how is it impossible? Because they both understand what come with it. Hmm. And so what they gonna do is, let's come to a, a means because at the end of the day, we both can take each other out. That's understood. That's overstood. But what, that's easy. Let's do this hard. Let's sit down and figure it out. So we can say just multi, multiple people versus just us. See, that's gangster. When you're thinking about multiple people versus just you. Hmm. Makes sense what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I'm strapped like that, bro. Hmm. I'm strapped like that, bro. My daddy was a gangster, bro. He died a gangster. I'm on that one. And when I say gangster, I don't mean, oh, going out there shooting and killing all. I mean, understanding, being able to do the hard things, being able to talk, being able to communicate, being able to cry, express them emotions, and at the same time, still bust your ass hmm. if you cross that line. Hmm. But I'm able to give you love. I'm able to spread it. And I'm able to make other people better. You dig what I'm saying? Right. Like, man, think about what my man, my daddy did with me. He made a whole nother generation better versus his. Think about how he grew up. He got 13 brothers and sisters. My mama got 17 brothers and sisters. Think about, I even think about the, the way they grew up and how, and the reason they the way they was. Situations may make, you know what I'm talking about? And if you survive it, you got to do what you got to do. We thug to get out of there, not to stay in there. Right. You feel me? Right. It's just an understanding of this, man. Like. Ain't nobody thugging out here because that's a hobby or it's a sport, man. People do that to survive, bro. It's a way of mean, bro, to survive, bro. And you got to realize we still hurt now. People, but at the same time, people got to do what they got to do. I can understand any situation, but at the same time, man, give, man. Who are you giving back to, man? At the end of the day, who going to be at your front or praising you versus saying, oh, he gone? And I could be G with you. I done been to some people's funeral and people be like, oh, I'm so glad. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Versus go to people from and everybody not crying, but they happy. They happy because they know that person had a good life. We celebrate from where I'm from. I learned that with my dad. From now on, I celebrate every passing, bro, because, man, I'm, man, they going to a whole nother place. I'm most spiritually connected. It's different, man. I don't live on this earth. I don't live in nobody's box, bro. Hmm. I live in mine. I'm in my own lane, and I ain't tripping. You feel me? And I don't give a what nobody think about it either because guess what? You can say it under your breath. You can call me a pussy under your breath. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Do all it. Handle it however. You can even say it however you want to. Just let me go home. Just don't stop me from going home. And we ain't got no problems. I ain't got no problem with no man. Just don't stop me from going home. So, that energy. Yeah. That, that strength. Yeah. You put all that on the field. Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm my a... My whole fifth ward. I use all of it. But I use my thugging. I use my fighting. Man, I use my having to run from getting shot at. I'm talking about thugging from Lockwood. I'm talking about even in the war when it's Brewster Park, Liberty Road, and Coco Palms, everybody. We thugging in our own hood. I'm talking about this ain't... I'm talking about this is real gangster stuff going on. You yes, feel sir. me? So... What I did was, I said, you know what? Just like I told you, I had to make that decision in the 10th grade. Mm-hmm. You done more thug, you done more play football. But when I seen what Forrest Brook did for me, and I seen what thugging was doing for me, 
Hmm. Bro, I was thugging, I was getting shoes and maybe having a little money to, you know, take some eyes on something, maybe get a haircut or something. For us, we didn't got an apartment, my daddy got a job, mom doing good, we living up now, I ain't paying no rent, everybody, my daddy out of town every week, schools come, like, I can get something, so it just, right. bro, it ain't, I'm gonna be all with you, with you, if I can thug, if I can thug, this is the realest if I can crash out and go do some dumb shit, mm -hmm. I better crash out and go do some good shit. You hear me? You gotta, mm. do, you gotta do double right, bro. You got to do double right when you do wrong, cause you gotta offset that wrong, bro. That's right. You hear me? See, most people think when you do wrong, you still in the plus. Nah, bro, you in the negative. So for you to even get to the plus, you got to up the ante. You feel what I'm saying? That's only right. That's a mentality. That's the way a person thinks. Say, man, now, Holmes, I did something wrong to you. Let me know. Apology ain't no words. Those are actions. Let me show you. You hear me? And it ain't for you to accept it. I still supposed to show you whether you accept it or not. That's genuine. You dig what I'm saying, bro? And, and that's about karma, too, because what you do will come back around to you. See, I don't believe in karma. You know you why? It's a negative. Hmm. I don't believe in... I ain't finna claim a negative in my mind. You know why? Because if I ever did something wrong and it was wrong, I, I feel like I tried to cross every T before I could do that wrong. And that was probably my last result. If that's how I handled it, I pray to God and ask him to forgive me. I don't need forgiveness from nobody else but him. Hmm. You hear me? And he say once you pray about it, let it go, right? That's right. It's gone, bro. You can't you can't hold something on me that he didn't let it go. I ain't rocking like that. And if you coming at me like that, you're going to get this type of vibe because I'm like, man, going on. <clears throat> bro. You know how many times I done shot people down, even if what they were saying was, I'm a bull, bro, and I know what it is, bro. Like, some stuff is just in me. From a day, like, fourth grade, what you gonna do in a death? I put, everybody gotta put what they gonna do in there, you can't put your name on it. Mm -hmm. So the officer picked it out and she said, and everybody gotta guess whose stuff is this. Teacher came out, we guessing. Firefighter came out, we guessing. Football player. Everybody said, Lawrence. She come walk up to me. Why you wanna do that? You know it's only 1% of black, 1% of people in the world get a chance to do that. You need another option. I said, excuse me, I'm sorry. No disrespect. But my daddy told me when people tell me that, tell them that they wrong. And my teacher was like, Lord, shut up. I was like, nah, I'm just telling them what my daddy said. Like, I ain't getting in trouble because my daddy said this. You feel me? So right. I know, you know what I'm saying? Like. She like, huh? Wow, when I got to the lead, I seen that same police officer. I said, I told you. Any and everybody, you. Cuz, I ain't never had a job in my life. Hmm. I ain't never, I worked at Girlins, bagging groceries. Only, only for a summertime, cuz I was hustling them. Hey, two bags, 400. One basket, 200. Come on through. That's how I was going, hitting them. That girl is thugging. I, I probably made the most money ever in four months at Girlin. I ain't gonna go tell the location. Man, nah, 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 nah. It's gone. It's gone. Now girl is gone. Now they don't know nothing about this. Yeah, they don't know nothing yeah, about girl. Yeah, That's yeah. old. Yeah. That's old, man. Yeah. It's, it's over 10, 20 years. But just to say, bro, like, even when I did that, my daddy made me quit. I'm gonna tell you why he made me quit. He was like, what's this gonna teach you about getting to the NFL? What girl is gonna teach you about getting to the NFL? Hmm. I'm like, dang, so you need to go out there and practice or play football or do something. Girl is not going to get you to where you're saying. I said, you know what, you're right. My daddy made me stubborn like this to the fact of, how's somebody going to tell you what you can't do, son? Not you. And me being it, like that dreaming mentality, thinking outside the box. Bro, that's how I succeeded, bro. I'm, I'm nine years retired, bro. Mm -hmm. Nine years. I played eight, and I'm nine years retired. So, you hear me? so check this out. All right. So I, I caught some film. Now, I've been watching your entire career from high school coming yeah. on up, right? There was a particular game where you played CSU. Mm-hmm. Fourth and one. Yeah. And you it seemed like you had the whole power of the neighborhood, your family, everything yeah, behind you. I'm going to tell you why. That was my senior year. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. It's my senior year. So, you know, this this the year. They the first game of the season, so mm -hmm. and, and they are rivals, mm -hmm. right? And 
we had a lot of talk going around. Just our school, our school was in a turmoil, so we kind of all jailed together because we had a whole bunch of stuff going around. Rape stuff with other players, coach getting fired, all type of this crazy stuff going on. And it was a real, both of us real racist at that time. So we had a lot of different stuff going on. And they looked at us as rich kids. And we, man, come on, man, I wasn't nothing like that. I ain't rich, but but that's how they looked at us when you go to CSU. I mean, you know, Colorado, that's that's how it looked. Because CSU is the, you know, the, the state school. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Man, look. So they corners and everybody was talking. I was like, man, we the king of the hill. This is how it's going. I already popped it. It's like, y'all going to see. All the reporters was there. Like, y'all going to see. I been. I was a captain two years at Colorado, junior and senior year. Like, hmm. there ain't too many people did that. A couple people. Usually it's quarterbacks. Hmm. You hear me? So, with that being said, it was fourth and one just like any other time. And they was already tripping, trying to do all this old fancy stuff. Say, man, give me the man. I ran to the sideline. You can see the play. And when you put it up for them, I ran to the sideline. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Like, I'm telling my head coach, give me the ball. He trying to kick up. Man, he ain't kicking up field. Give me the ball. Hmm. Get what he say. Go ahead. Fourth and one. Bruh. I'm talking about. And it's what's so crazy about the whole open up like this. And I could have easily just probably ran right past him. I'm going through you, bro. That's how I'm coming. Hmm. Giving it to them people. Hmm. You hear me? Hmm. And when I did it, I flexed up on them. I felt it. I didn't my hood up. You know what I'm talking about? I threw the water up every time. People are like, why y'all throwing the water up? Man, you don't know. You don't, you don't know. Yeah. You don't know. When I throw it up, they feel it. They know what that mean. They, they know what I came from. They see me now. You know what I'm saying? The progress. Like, yeah. that's a symbol of, yeah, man. Yo, we get in there, man. man. We in there. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Just safe to say, man, but, man, I'm blessed, bro. And I understand it. And I never take it for granted. And, hey, man, to my classic clothes, bro, this is what you're going to get, man. I'm going to get love, bro. I'm going to get love, bro. I ain't got no hate in my heart. I'm going to get love. So, and if you want hate, you got to go on and go somewhere else. So, that was your senior season. Yeah. You you had a tremendous season that that year. Fifteen touchdowns, so, four touchdowns in one game. So from that point, how was you able to jump to the NFL? I know they was already looking at you. Well, they was already looking at me. They was already looking, but I was ranked the number one foot. Like I had already told myself, mm -hmm. like, guess who they won't deny? Number one. Like number two don't get there sometimes. Number three don't get there, mm -hmm. but they ain't denying number one. Hmm. So I was going to be the best fullback coming out. But I wasn't even no fullback, bro. Like, you want to know what my position was called? V-back. Hmm. They changed. Like, I'm the only person in school history got his own position. I wasn't a fullback. I wasn't a running back. I wasn't a halfback. I was a V-back. Like, they're like, oh, that's Vickers back. Nah, it's versatile back. Did everything. You know what I'm saying? That's how I was built. My daddy had me in everything. You know what I'm saying? When I was young, I played everything. Like, you see what I'm saying? He trained me for that, bro. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? He stamped that on me since young, bro. Like, sometimes kids don't know what parents doing, man. Just, just file suit, man. File suit. But I believed in him so much, it was so easy. Like, it wasn't hard because he was already my hero. You know what I'm saying? He could have told me to go run through the wild. Just like, you remember what he used to do to me? It's like, hey. He say, hey, uh, man, let me see how fast you're going. Go to the store and give me a snicker. Tricking me to go get him a snicker, but seeing how fast I run. Hmm. Like, psychologically tricking me to go get it. You hear me? Mm -hmm. I love him, bro, for that. But you know, your, your dad was a special person because... They don't make him like that, bro. Everybody in the neighborhood... You Shout out to my mama, too, man. I love my mama to death. My dad is just my dog, y'all. Don't My, <laughs> my mama is my heart. Make that clear. My mama is my heart. Because, look... You hear me? Cause my look, soul is my daddy. All the brothers in the neighborhood you probably bet your daddy has to get there. Everybody, bro. Mr. Vic, bro. Yeah. Look. Daddy chop you. Yeah. Eat something to eat. Yeah. Yeah. And he gonna talk good to you while you're in there. Smoke. Yeah. And he gonna be like, look, he gonna give you some game. Cook for you. So, you man. Man. So, stop look, doing that, bro. Look, I told you, man. Look, stop, I know, look, 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 I got you, man. Stop, bro. Look, I got you. I'm going to tell y'all what I told him. I told him, man, let's quit talking about daddy because yeah. I was about to cry. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about when I whispered to him, so. No, 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 you good. You good, and I'm pivoting. Yeah. So, all right, you, you made it to the league. Yeah. You got drafted. They took you in the sixth round with the Browns, yep. right? So, 
What was that? I, I know you already was away from home in Boulder, but going to Cleveland, was there a culture shock? Bro, was I was, there? man, bro, let me tell you something. Yeah. Whatever they would have sent me. Hmm. They would have sent me to Mobile, Alabama. I was on a mission. Hmm. I was on a mission. Hmm. And usually where I come from, you fold right before the mission. Everybody I know, all the man. Let me tell you what was the scariest thing for me, going to college or going to the NFL. I knew so many cold people before me, like cold people, and they would come back home. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, damn, why they come back home? You know what I'm saying? What is it? I'm talking about cold, everybody love them in the hood, tough, everything. I'm like, damn, why they come back home? You know, I got to college. You know what it was? They was tough. They were mentally tough. Hmm. Say, man, sometimes you don't even understand that roadblock is the test to see if you really want it. Any negative situation, I made it positive. Guess what? Teacher don't want to do this and do that. Guess what? Finna go study harder, finna go do this harder, finna put it in his face. Made everything possible. Guess what? Oh, buddy, he cold, he fast, and we can't do it. everything else I'm going to do. Guess what I'm going to do? Run, 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 run. It ain't nothing you can do that's going to make me stop out doing you. That's You feel me? Like, I was trained like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, man. See, so when I hear you talk about mental toughness, like, I think that's some of my strife that I run into with people is because, like, we different. We yes. family, but we different. I get mad at people when I see that they got an opportunity and I can see where they can succeed at. I just get mad and I, I might don't say anything. I don't. I don't. I don't. You know why? Why? It ain't for everybody, bro. I, let me tell you this. Success ain't for everybody. Poverty ain't for everybody. Hmm. You hear me? Now, some stuff is circumstantial. That don't mean it's for you, though. Being broke wasn't for me. That don't mean I wasn't. It just wasn't for me. Right. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah. Being lame ain't for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Being soft, not for me. Like, right. it's cool. I like it. I can have a soft side, but it's just not for me. You hear me? Yes, like, sir. what's for me is for me, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to worry about it. For me, man, for real. Man, yeah. FOE, man, for me. What's for me is for me, man. <laughs> on everything. And bro, that, like, that, that's, that's what they saying in church. What God got for me is for me. For me, man. Like, and that's what you don't understand. Like, half the people. Let me tell you the main thing about our people. Not our people, just people in general. Mm -hmm. You believe in God, you have faith, and you pray for it. I believe in dreams. So, it's way easy. Like, the Bible, God, everything you put, it's way easier for me to see it, even if it ain't there visually. Right. Because I'm a dreamer. I'm used to seeing things that ain't there and making it come. You know what I'm saying? Shit, the people, oh no, that's far reach. Oh, uh, that ain't even possible. Bet. Let me show you. It wasn't possible for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, but I do it. So they can, man, you can do this shit too. Every bro, we all can be successful. It just ain't for everybody. It's what you willing to do, man. What you willing to do, man? Sacrifice. Let me tell you this: half the people that's successful sacrifice a lot, and that's what people don't understand. That's why they be there. That's why they stay there. That's why they have it and they act the way they act when they do get successful. Meaning, like when I say act the way they act, meaning showing love, trying to make sure everybody, because it is beautiful, it's beautiful over there, bro. And I wish everybody could be successful. I wish they could. Hmm. But that ain't reality. Reality is everybody ain't, because everybody ain't going to push it. And you can be talented, you could be good at something, you could be everything. But one thing, one thing that any and everybody can do that will get them there if they just did this. Bust their ass and work hard. That still that I'll be anything. That I'll be anything. Just don't take no. Be ignorant. Be ignorant to the fact of taking no for what it is you want in this world. Just like you told your mama. You know how many people didn't tell their mama no or just like their mama at one point in their life and feel like she was doing this and doing that. How many times you just like your mama, man, mama, you love 
Think about it. And this woman love you more than anything in this world, right? Yeah. I right? used to book my mama all the right? time. You feel me? Like, think about that, bro. Mm -hmm. You will do that with the woman that love you, but you won't go succeed and make her happy to have her, make her have that feeling. Just like I said, bro, if you can make a motherfucker feel bad, but you can't make him feel two times as good, you got an evil soul. And I want you to stay away from me because you're going to take people peace. You're a peace taker. Hmm. And for your sake and for my sake, let's just not be around each other. And you can be that way, but I'm going to move myself around. Now, I can still love you, but let me move around because that ain't what's up, man. I ain't got I want love. Hmm. I'm looking for what love is. That's it. That's it, bro. On God. And it don't matter who you is, family, friends, that man, look here. You could be my brother or sister, which I don't have to worry about that, but my brother and sister know, like, even I know with them, like, say, man, we was raised to not care who you are, you go. You hear me? You go. So if you understand me, don't even come over here like that, because we got that understanding. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because I remember when we was kids. You ain't lying to everybody. When we, but yeah. we had to follow. Go, 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 bro. Go. So, go. as we talk about the Browns, I remember 2008 made the Pro Bowl. Yes, sir. And that was the year I believe that Jamal Lewis Jamal, had the 1300. 1300. Yeah, 1300. First time ever, bro. And um, um, Lorenzo Neal was a. Uh, one of the guys that uh, brought me in the league, old school fullback, cool brother, man, gave me game. And uh, uh, we all went dumb, even um, uh, um, uh, Thomas, LaDainian Thomas went dumb, and Lorenzo went, and he he, uh, he ended up having a little, uh, I think he broke his arm or something, he broke something, but he ended up hitting up, and he just told me, go on, go. He was like, go on, go, young boy. You deserve it, boy, you did your thing. And that was my first year starting. Hmm. My first year starting, but we won 1,300. That was the revive year for they was trying to say Jamal Lewis was out of there and nothing. Man, that man was, that man was like a young bull. And you got to realize he had 1,300 and he missed five games. Hmm. And he missed five games. We went 10 and 6, the best record ever. Didn't lose a home game at all. Hmm. You hear me? Hmm. Like, one of the best records ever in Cleveland Browns history. Yeah, man. Like, Eat, man. Mr. Thousand Yard, man. If you want to get your band, man, come run behind a man, man. You hear me? <laughs> Look, yeah. Looking for a band, run behind a man, man. Because, I mean, what I started seeing at that point, like, the stock was rising and everything yeah. moving up. And then you tried free agency. Yeah. And well, I didn't try free agency. What right. happened was um, I was free on my contract, but then they had a, uh, they had a um, tender on me. So what that mean is that in order for them to keep me, they had to put a first round or a second round or a third round tender. What Cleveland did was put me on a first round tender for my position. So what that mean was in order for somebody to come get me, they had to give up a first round player to come get me. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like they had the upper hand, but I got paid good. I got paid 2.5 million a year. You know, somebody one season, somebody four months. Hmm. You hear me? They had to come out of it, but they had to pay me. They had to pay me the top five in my position. Hmm. That's what Cleveland had to do. But if somebody wanted me, they had to do that. So I had to end up staying an extra year. So when I stayed the extra year, they ended up having coaches change, owner change, everything. And it just, I asked, I was like, man, I want to stay. I don't want to leave. But I'll tell you how God worked. My dad had ended up getting ready, you know, cancer. He was already fighting some other, some other demons, but cancer hit my daddy real hard and he was he was thinking about giving up so it was just like man houston came calling because i was still gonna go to dallas that year hmm. but just you know everybody I man come home my dad was like man just you know i was like man it's gonna this gonna make everybody happy i'm gonna do this for everybody because i didn't want to come home like i didn't want to come back and play here like i needed that distance to work and be focused i didn't i didn't want but i'm glad i did i'm glad my daddy told me to do it like he was a reason and my wife was a reason i did it you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying but if it wasn't for them i wouldn't have did it you know what i'm saying and the circumstances is what because even even if it at the end of the day i wouldn't have did it if it wasn't for the circumstance i did it for them you know what i'm saying but it was the best decision possible because at the end of the day i lost my daddy right after that season but right before he seen me get, he seen me go to Dallas. He seen me sign my Dallas, my Dallas Cowboys contract. He seen that and that broke him. Like 
when that happened, he could have just went on ahead and passed right there. When he seen me sign to Dallas, bro, he was just like, you did that for me, man, but I ain't going to lie. This here show feel good. And, man, and he didn't get a chance to see me play by May 4th. Because, see, you was in a different situation where most folks, they hadn't played in two Texas teams. I played both. Two Texas teams, and they and they had good seasons. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. Yeah. The crazy thing about it. Yeah. So, Aaron Foster just got like $48 million, right? Mm -hmm. I could tell the story now. Aaron Foster get $48 million. I'm crunk. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, they may just call me and give me a, you know, a little bigger check. Because you got to think about it. When I went to the Texans, Kubiak didn't like me. Let's just get the fact. Kubiak did not want me with the Texans. That's why I was kind of ill being here. Kubiak didn't like me. The, the uh, GM, Rick Smith, wanted me. He was a brother. He wanted me. Rick, 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 I. Right. But um, Rick wanted me. And so you got me in a wall between the general manager and the head coach. G general manager don't coach you. Head coach do. See what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. he torturing me because he want this other guy. You know what I'm talking about? The dude named James Casey. And James Casey, man, what's so cold about it? Me and James, James is a good dude, man. Good brother, man. Um, I taught him a lot. He taught me a lot. And me and James just made it work. But they tried to, but this is why I say, God, it's good, man. They tried to make conservation between the two, especially Kubiak. I dislike Gary Kubiak, and he knew it. So to make a long story short, what he did was he set me on the bench the first five games, made me play every special team. Man, the man had me playing tight end on scout team at practice. Now I'm a six-year vet. He just gave me $3 million to come play for the Texans. You gave me $3 million for one year, 1.5 to sign and 1.5 salary. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you playing with me like that. Everybody else you bring over here, you letting them play. He hulling me. He hulling me. It was cool. Guess what? We was winning, but we wasn't running the ball. I got in that game five. Aaron Foster, 1,300. Ben Tate, 1,000. Derek Ward, 700. Slayton, 400. You hear me? Like, we had over them the 3,500 rushing. You know what I'm saying? In our backfield, Dre going stupid play action. Jacoby going dumb. We killing, like, turn that around. Hmm. City was crazy. Like, man, we couldn't, man, we was rock stars in the H. Brothers, us, first time, you know what I'm saying? All us thuggings, whole team, karate, everything. Guess what they do? Bust the team up. Send me gone, send Jacoby gone, send D'Amico gone. All the brothers. That's why I told you, man, the Texans, man. I knew what they was. Like I said, I took that lick from my family. My family ain't know what I was going through. I used to be at practice crying and shit, mad and a motherfucker. Six year vet, and you trying to play with me. But I used to, I also tortured them too, like Kubiak. He'd be walking through, and I'd be like, man, why you don't like me, bro? He'd be like, man, man, man why you don't like me? You know what I'm talking about? I just Did he ever say? Yeah, man, he never, oh, no, I just want y'all, man, quit playing. Like, I would literally be like, man, quit playing on me, man. Come on, quit playing me. Then one game, he just played with me too much, and my mom was there. And I lost it. I cussed his ass out on the sideline. I went off on his ass. And he set my ass out for three games. He set me down for three games, but he, he aggravated and pushed me. Like, he kept pushing. And I just, I couldn't take it. We was playing at home. I'm going off, and he just steady playing with me. I drop a pass. You know what I'm saying? But I caught four. I dropped a pass because the dude threw a duck. Out of bounds. So I'm like, why would I catch the ball behind the line out of bounds? I just slap it down. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. die for a slap it down. I ain't going to get no yards. It's a negative one play. Like, that's stupid. You know what I'm saying? I come to the sideline. He talking scrap. I just, man, I went off, man. Fuck you. Man. I slapped the shit out you. That hood side he had already thought mm -hmm. that was there. Like, he wanted it so bad. Like, he was doing stuff, man. The other coaches was coming to me, man. Just like, man, just... Just hold off. My running back coach would just, man, skip it. Man, look here, man. My running back coach is the only reason I was there too besides my family. Bro, he held me down. He held me down. He was like, man, I'm telling you, I'm going to get you in there. Don't worry about it. Watch, I'm going to keep And they fought. They fought. And when he did, the running back, everybody fought from. But like I said, bro, when you – people see you doing wrong and you're a good dude, bro, people going to stand up for you. And if they don't, you know what I'm talking about? That's what it is. But that love, man, like – People, people show me love all the time only because I give it and I expect it because I know what I give. You dig what I'm saying? Like, I don't look for nothing else because right. I know what I give. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, bro. And even when they released me, like I told you, they gave um, Foster 48 million. So they called me in. I'm thinking they about to sign me. He said, hey, man, we about to release you. 
No, this is what he said. Hey, could you take less money? Less money? Because they were supposed to give me two. They gave me three million for the first year. 1.5 to sign, 1.5 to play. I was supposed to make two million dollars my next year. You know what I'm saying? He asked me if I could take less money. I was like, oh, no. I appreciate the opportunity, but I'm gone. <laughs> he was like, well, if you're here, you know, later on, I said, I won't be here. Hmm. I won't be here. I won't be here tomorrow. I promise you I won't be here tomorrow. He was like, well, you know, man, come on. I said, man, look here. Let's kick shit, bro. You never like me. It is what it is. But, I said, man, give me some dignity and just tell me, hey, goodbye. He, all right, yeah. He tried to dab me up, huh? Hit him with this. <laughs> Hit him with that. Walked out the door. Look, I walked out the door. I'm in my car. I'm actually kind of relieved, but I'm like, damn, I'm going to have to tell my wife. I just got fired. Bro, by the time I'm pulling home, I'm getting ready to tell her, guess who called me? Jerry Jones. Oh, God. He had my coach, uh, Rob, uh, you know, um, Rob Ryan, his mm -hmm. brother. You know that brother? Yeah. I had him in Cleveland long with the hair. long hair. Yeah, yeah, I had him in Cleveland. Yeah. That's my dog. He had just went to dad as a D coordinator. He called me. He said, you crazy motherfucker, what you doing? <laughs> I said, man, who is that, man? This me, man. The big dude riding around, man. What's up? What's up, man? What's going on? What's up, man? He said, I got somebody I want to talk to you. Put Jerry on the phone. I said, man, Houston must have been drinking that stupid juice, huh? I said, man, why you say? I said, man, they let you go. Don't worry about it. Hmm. Next day, I was on the jet. It happened. Flying to Dallas. Sign. This I called. Sign my shit. While I was there. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Another three mil. 1.2 up front, 1.8 salary. Hmm. And then I got my two mil next year. See what I'm saying? So I got four. Hmm. You hear me? God good. God good, man. man. Always, bro, because I stand on what I stand on. Hmm. You feel me? And I went in that office and I looked at me and said, Take less? Is you crazy? You mean to tell me you're going to go get a Ferrari? and put some fucking hood caps on it? You just gave this man 48 million. You mean to tell me you want me to take less to protect him? I'll let you. I squeeze it so hard. <laughs> I'm talking about I crush this shit. You hear me? Mm. Play on me, man. So I take it. It was a pleasant experience with Jerry Jones in the in the Love Jerry, man. Boys, Love things. Jerry, man. Love Jerry. I ain't got nothing but respect for him. Love him to death. Real dude. Mm -hmm. Jerry Jones, real. He's solid. He's solid with me. He kept it 100 with me. Still keeping it 100 with me. Shout out to Jerry. So, that was the last team that you were on. Dallas Cowboys. I retired from Dallas Cowboys, bro. Yeah. And, um... Your retirement, that, was that from any injury? injury? Yeah, I had to sit down from injury. Mm -hmm. I ended up uh, having nine herniated disc in my neck and back. I wasn't walking. Mm -hmm. I wasn't walking for five months. I had head that nobody knew. I wasn't walking for five months, bro. I was in a wheelchair. I was in a wheelchair. Tell you how crazy this is. I'm in a wheelchair back and forth here at Dallas. Every, am I lying? Back and forth, wheelchair. In Dallas, three days doing therapy. Fly back home, come see my kids in a wheelchair. We go on a trip to New Orleans. I'm in a wheelchair, rolling myself, having fun, thugging it. Man, you can't keep, man. Look at me now. Hmm. You hear me? Yeah. I'm not walking. Still went and did that back surgery. I had to go have it because my disc exploded in my back while I was driving, leaving therapy. You hear me? I'm on the highway and my disc explodes. In my back, I'm crying like hell. I can't move. I'm damn near paralyzed. My little brother got to drive me to the hospital laying face down in a two-seater, bro. You hear me? I crawl in there and they do emergency surgery on me. They come back and show me I, I had at least four or five pieces on my back like this. Like, you going back to play football? Hell no! Hmm. But... Look at me now, I'm still here. Stronger than ever. Stronger than what I was then. Mentally. Everything, bro. God good. Bro. And you're doing good. And man, you're bless, doing man. good. Bless, Look. man. Got grown kids, two kids in college, man. Two more on the way. Two more on the way, and I still got baby girl. So. So. I see. Beautiful wife, too. Yes, indeed. Yeah, beautiful wife. I got that. 
Yeah. What what yeah. thing? What thing? I want to talk about too. The clothing that you got on. Yeah, man. All right. So after the football, everything. Nah, this got, was this was doing it, but after yeah. you know, just different business yeah. ventures. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And man, let me tell you, any and everything I do, break out people I love involved. Like you know what I'm saying? And it's not. It's not 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 saying I'm not a part of it, but you know it's another creator behind this. You know what I'm saying? But another creator. But you feel me? Like that's my dog. Like I want to see him outshine in and it. Like people don't understand that, bro. Like if you don't want to see your people outshine everybody, like what you doing? Right. Why you want to be the only one with something? Like why everybody can't have something? You know what I'm saying? Like. You feel me? Like, that's the mentality that I'm on. Of course, they're going to have to do what they got to do. That's why everybody don't eventually, like, I understand why crews don't work. Because everybody don't want to hold their weight. But, if, man, somebody pulling more than their weight, come on, man. You want to see? I see it in you. Come on, man. I don't care who you are. Come on, man. Because guess what? It's for you. That's my 10%. And I'm going to give more than 10%. I'm going to give 100 where you're supposed to give 10. You feel me? That's how much I love God. You don't ask for 10, I'm giving them 100. You hear me? Hmm. But that's that bull mentality. I'm gonna give you more than what you asked for. So that's why it don't even bother me, because I'm gonna give you more than what you asked for. Hmm. Yeah. It's a blessing, so, so touch on the, the other businesses that you got going on, if you care to speak on it, what the people can look for. Oh uh, man, I have, um, right now, man, I'm in the digital world. I have um, two apps out. My culture group, you can go to the app store on, uh, on your iPhone and go check it out. And uh, Pro Cruise will be dropping December 28th on my dad's birthday. That's in honor of him. Uh, that's my uh, my mobile uh, towing app. Um, but other than that, man, you know, clothes, man, podcast, man. Uh, uh, I do some stuff with ESPN where I went to um, I went to a journalist school and did some stuff, man, working on interviews. So I'm gonna do some stuff with ESPN. This upcoming season, man, I got a couple of offers as far as running back coaching job in colleges, man. I'm, man, it's just all coming. I'm just trying to pick and choose how to play it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I ain't picking and choose nothing. Whatever God pushes me to do, that's what I'm going to do. You know what I'm talking about? Whatever he called me to do, I'm going to do it. If it come my way and they need me, I'm coming. Cuz say come, I'm coming. <laughs> huh? Love, man, because I here. appreciate you having me, man. Man, look here. For real. You don't want to knock me down, but you're getting strong, boy. Look, yeah. Look, yeah. Look, I appreciate and love you because, look. Yeah. We grew up together and yeah. always looked up to you. Yeah. Even though you were a little bit younger, but, yeah. you know, I, I always, understand. I understand. Always looked just, up you, to know, you. you know, just that, that, that outgoing, like, not that you were shit. You was cool and I always player, but, you know, like, Sometimes you see them crazy people like, man, I wish I had that. You know what I'm saying? And it pushed you to, you know what I'm talking about, go beyond yourself. Yeah. You feel me? Because we all, we all got to get out of our box, man. That, that's what we're supposed to mature. We're supposed to change, bro. That's a part of growth, bro. If you yeah. ain't growing, you ain't changing. If you ain't changing, you ain't growing. That's Same right. difference, but that don't mean you got to lose yourself. You can keep your values and keep all that, bro. But got to grow, bro. Got to grow. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all for and having me, man. And you Happy know, Thanksgiving, y'all. And you know what I do it for. Yeah, you know love what you, I love you, mate. Love your daddy. Love your Aunt Hope. Love your Iron Man, man. Love y'all. Rest in peace. Rest in heaven. So if the people want to find you, how they can find you? Man, look at me, man. Vickers, F-O-E. Vickers underscore F-O-E. You know, that family over everything, man. Family over everything. At uh, Instagram. Check me out. All right. And I normally end it with, with a nice uh, roundabout uh, wrap up here. So tonight, uh, we had Brother Lawrence Vickers give his story and also give you the essence of what he's made of, his principles, everything, and his outlook uh, on his entire journey. I, for one, I mean, I, I felt that I knew most of it, but it was a lot of things I didn't know. Yeah. And it was very inspiring. It, it kind of woke me up to kind of understand you a little bit more, yeah. even though I feel like I should know you a uh, certain way. Like, you always on 10. Yeah. I'm not like... Some people naturally just, yeah. ever since you know me young, I'm always go, 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 go. Yeah. Like, I'm 10, loudest. Like, I'm naturally like, that's Louisiana, bro. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We country boys, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, y'all, what I wanted to achieve here, and I, I feel that we did this successfully, yeah. is to show you that, look, look at what you have. Be thankful for it. 
Hell, even look at the things that you don't have and be thankful because God gave you a chance to go back and get it. As long as you got time, you got the opportunity. The worst thing that's going to beat you is time because when you waste it, you'll never get it back. You can always lose money, but you can't buy back time. Most valuable thing is time. And from going forward, can folk done enlighten me to some things that I'm going to incorporate. But what I'd like for y'all to do, if y'all watched it or whatever, rewind it. Get you a little bit more insight into what we're talking about. We salute him. Uh, World of Company 5 Entertainment. Support everything he doing. Well, hell, Ken Mills, uh, Boy Family, Mills Family, we always, we yeah, intertwine, we go, together. Man. Because Bonnie Bills won. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Emerson's, man. Everybody love y'all, man. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Be blessed, man. Kiss your people. Give them their flowers while they here. Yes, you sir. hear me? Salute to all, man. R.I.P. Daddy. I ain't everything with that. Love you, Daddy. Kings, let's prevail, baby. Catch us next week. We'll have another interesting episode. But you are now here with Ken Mills on Bias on Boss of Houston Network. Y'all have a great, happy Thanksgiving. Hello fam, Ken Mills here once again for World of Comedy Vibes Entertainment. So to give you the idea of what Unbiased is, we always see things on social media and also in the world where we wonder what is the thought process behind these idiotic things that people do. We're going to give an honest, unbiased opinion. So with that being said, we're going to cover several different topics. We're going to be truly unbiased this season.